Well, hello everyone and happy 4th of July to you. You know, aren't you glad we live in a country that's free where we can have opportunities? Really, the sky's the limit. I mean, I know there's a lot of negative talk about America and certainly there's a lot of politicians who'd like to, you know, make it sound like we're just the worst people in the world. But what a great country to live in, to be able to really be or 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 do anything that you want to do in life. I mean, it's really exciting. And I, I just I'm so grateful for this country. I'm, you know, when I when I listen to some of those uh, those patriotic songs and they some of them really get to me. One of them that gets to me is is um, America the Beautiful, where it talks about the soldiers and it says something to the effect that they they love liberty more than life. I mean, who who are these guys? I mean, the heart of our soldiers who who love liberty more than life and are willing to give their lives for our freedom. I mean, those guys just are are amazing to me. I'm really uh, I'm really grateful for them, and I hope today you know Independence Day. I hope you just take a second and and uh, look at all the wonderful things that we have in our country and and uh, and then take advantage of it. Okay. Well, there you go. So anyway, have a great 4th of July and enjoy the fireworks. You know, today I wanted to talk a little bit about the difference between active and passive investing. And maybe you've you've heard, you know, the differences. What I don't think a lot of even financial advisors understand is really what that means. When you look at active portfolio manager, basically what they're trying to do, active being the, the key word here, they're trying to actively beat the market or a specific index. We'll just call it the S&P 500. Active portfolio management is all about moving money, trading, getting in and out of things, uh, riding the wave up, getting out before it heads back down, and trying to actively manage that money so that it outperforms the index or a benchmark or the market as a whole. Passive portfolio management, what it tries to do is mimic the investment or the index. So it tries to just do as well as the index. And although, though, and although those might be accurate um, descriptions of active and passive portfolio management, it's just not even what we like to do when it comes to active or passive management. The reason is this. I think both those things are, um, are, are really difficult to achieve. Now, certainly, if you want to just be a passive investor, go by the index, um, get it as cheap as you possibly can, don't pay fees, don't pay an advisor, don't pay a broker, just get the least expensive ETF or, or, man, or portfolio um, of, of the index and just leave it, then you're probably going to do pretty close to the index. But don't ever expect that you'll do better than the index. And for some, that might be okay. Active portfolio management is much tougher to be able to think that you're going to jump in and jump out of things and actively manage that money and then eventually outperform the index after the fees and the costs and commissions that go along with active portfolio management. That's a little bit more difficult uh, to do. What I like is what I call being actively passive. Okay. Active in the sense that you know what's going on. Active in the sense that you know what you're invested in. Active in the sense that you know why you're invested in it. And active in the sense that you're following along and making sure that the investment that you put your money into is still doing what you thought it would do. Let me give you an example. Let's just presume I want to own a particular stock. We'll just, uh, for fun, we'll just call it Apple. So what I first want to do is really understand Apple. 
And I want to make sure I'm capable of understanding it. You know, Charlie Munger, who's Warren Buffett's partner, he talks about this uh, pretty succinctly. The first and foremost thing that you should do is make sure you have the capacity to understand the investment. Okay, so let's just assume I understand Apple, I like Apple, I use Apple, um, and I'm very comfortable with Apple. Now, we won't talk about price at this juncture because there's a difference between price and value. Price is what you pay, value is what it's worth. And some of those, sometimes those things can be quite, uh, there could be quite a spread in those, in those prices. So we won't talk about that, but let's just say I'm into Apple at a price that I'm comfortable with, the values there. Now I want to stay active in the sense that I, I kind of want to read the news about Apple. I want to know what's going on. Um, I certainly want to read the annual shareholders report. I uh, probably want to watch anything that the CEO is talking about. Um, I would definitely want to see what's going on in their new product launches and how those are accepted. So I want to stay active in the sense that I know what's going on with Apple. But I want to be passive in the sense that I don't want to trade it in and out, up and down with charts, looking at moving averages. I want to eventually hold that as long as I possibly can uh, for life, maybe, certainly for the next 10 years. You know, Warren Buffett says he wouldn't own a stock for 10 minutes that he wasn't willing to own for 10 years. So in that regard, we want to be extremely passive. We'd like to just get in and hold that thing um, forever. And as long as the company is still doing what we thought it was supposed to do, as long as the company is still, um, uh, you know, good management, the different things that would go along with helping that company grow, then we want to stay involved, but we want to be actively passive. So that's a, and that's a big difference between what happens when you, when you have access to capital, when it's time to invest, you're certainly going to want to invest when the when price and value are at least at parity or hopefully price is below value. That's even better. And then again, we just want to stay active in terms of understanding and knowing what's going on in the world. So those are big differences. When you walk into a traditional financial planning firm and they throw out to a bunch of mutual funds, they're hoping that you'll stay passive and not really know what's going on, but yet the mutual fund managers are very active. So that's what I call passively active. You're passive, you're doing nothing to learn, you're doing nothing to understand, you don't have any idea what these mutual funds are buying and why they're buying them, yet the mutual fund over here is very active. I mean, the turnover ratios in mutual funds sometimes get into the hundreds, you know, where they're turning over that portfolio, um, you know, 100 percent of the time in a given year and maybe even much higher. So they're very, very active. And that's maybe not so good for you, maybe not so good for the fund. But that's how most mutual funds are built. There are some that do more of a buy and hold strategy, but for the most part, they're very active in and out of stuff. And when they hear just even the slightest bit of news that might be negative, they're out of that thing and um, because they can't afford to have a bad quarter. Every time you get your mutual fund statement, don't you expect it to go up? And if it's not at least going up a little bit or staying flat, you're wondering what's going on and it could be easy for you to be swayed to pull your money. Yet you're very passive and I'm not saying you, I'm saying most traditional financial planning companies, uh, clients are very passive. They don't know what they have. They don't know why they have five or six or eight different funds. They just know that it's, you know, diversified and that their financial advisor is taking care of them. So they're very passive. They're not reading about the stocks that they own and they're not keeping up on the company news and new launches and products. And as a result, it's a dangerous place to be in. First and foremost, it's going to be you're going to be the type that, you know, panics quickly when the markets start to crash because you don't know what you have or why you have it. You just know that your advisor picked a lousy fund. 
And meanwhile, that manager over there in the fund is is moving and trying to sell out and keep your profits as the best he can. As a result, mutual funds typically way underperform the index over time. There might be a year or two where they beat the index. But after you add in fees, commissions, um, all the trading costs, and then eventually taxes, uh, you're lucky if a mutual fund can even come close to just passively investing in the index. So so that's um, that's kind of a good snapshot of the difference between active and passive investors. Now you got to ask yourself, what type of investor are you? What type of investor do you want to be? You know, you don't have to be full time, all at it every day, 24 seven to be a good investor. All you have to do is you have to have capital, of course, and that's where our cash value oftentimes comes in. But then you just have to be able to understand um, what you're investing in, why you're investing in it, and whether or not price is at least equal to value at the time you get involved. Now, this is real estate. This is gold. This is oil and gas. This is stocks. This is the corner business that you might be interested in. This is any kind of an investment. You know, we do a lot of real estate right now, and it's actively passive. We certainly are active making sure that we're going into the right locations, that the subdivision looks like it's going to be, um, you know, marketable, that it's in a good area. They say location, 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 right? So all that is very, very active. Then we, of course, we're very active because we're the builders as well. Our building company then takes it vertical. But investors who are with us, they're very active in the beginning, and then they, they're a little bit more passive while everything's going vertical. In the meantime, they might be reading everything from what's going on with mortgages and interest rates to the community that that's being built in. I mean, they want, might want to be much more active in just understanding what's going on. So again, whether it's real estate, individual stocks, businesses, whatever your interest is, you want to be actively passive. You want to be very active in understanding what it's all about and then very passive in trading it and getting in and out and trying to get the next thing uh, on board. And this has been proven. You don't have to go out and try to say, well, is is Dan right on this? All you got to do is look at guys like Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger and Charlie, Charlie Icahn and, and Ray Dalio. I mean, these guys all have very similar uh, philosophies. Warren Buffett just killing them all in this actively passive uh, perspective. So, all right, there you go. That's it for this week. Um, again, go out and have a great holiday um, and thank a soldier. <laughs> if you see one, be grateful you live in this country and then take some time and just really understand and be involved in your investments and the things that you're interested in, that's the, man, that's first and foremost. Only invest in things that you're interested in and uh, and then understand them. And you're going to be just fine. And you're going to do so much better than those who sit down with traditional financial advisors and buy an array of mutual funds and then cross your fingers and hope the market goes up. Uh, you'll never know what's going on and you'll always be in a panic mode if things correct. So... Um, any questions that you have, always reach out. Questions at wisemoneytools.com. And I'll be happy to answer them just as quick as I can. In the meantime, make sure you subscribe to the videos, to the podcast. Don't miss an episode. And we'll try to do this together. All right, till next week, take care.